Okay, let's start this video off with a quiz. You're gonna be put to the test here. I want you to watch Jesse perform a set of dumbbell incline bench press to 12, and I wanna see if you can spot what he's doing wrong. All right, so here he goes. We can count along if you want, but pay close attention and see if you can spot the mistake in this set. You counting, Jesse? Six. Okay. Do you see it yet? Yeah. We'll collect your answers here at the end. What number? 11. You're good. 12. Cool. All right, so now, what was the issue? I don't know, what was it? <laughs> Now, a lot of you probably don't see the issue because you make the same exact mistake. But what I was doing was I was actually secretly kind of counting here and I've got a, a stopwatch on my iPhone that says that he performed this set in 27.3 seconds. Speed racer. Which is much too short. Now you're thinking, why? What do you mean the length of the set? When you perform your sets with the main focus being three sets of 12 and you get attached to the numbers. Now I made a video about this years ago and I think it's incredibly important that you hear this concept again and I'm actually gonna expand upon it. When you get fixated on the numbers, three sets of 12, you're already setting yourself up for probably an imperfect set and one that's certainly not gonna deliver the growth that you're capable of. Okay, now the language that muscles speak is tension. We know that. If you want your muscles to grow, if you want to stimulate muscle protein synthesis, you need to elicit tension in those working muscles. And we know there's a few ways that you can do it. We know that you can get a lot of mechanical tension if you have a very heavy load in your hand. So if Jesse was using, let's say, a five rep max here, he would have a lot more tension being driven to the muscles. He can only get five repetitions if it was truly his max and he went to failure. But that amount of tension is missing in a set to 12, let's say, because it's not that absolute amount of tension, right? The, right? the weights are less. So what you'd have to do in that case is you'd have to figure out a way to sort of equalize that tension. And one of the main ways that we equalize the missing absolute mechanical tension is to bring in some other drivers of hypertrophy, namely eccentric muscle tension, meaning the, the lowering of the weights, because we know in and of itself that's a driver of more growth. Well, when we talk about 12 repetitions, no one just picked that number out of thin air. They didn't say 12, why didn't they say 11? Why are not all of your sets prescribed in your programs to 11 repetitions instead? 12 repetitions was the one that sort of met the criteria of, e of, of, of eclipsing the 45 seconds of tension that seems to be significant for driving muscle gains when you're using lighter weights. And where that comes from is again, the absolute amount of time it takes you to perform one repetition, realizing that the eccentric portion of that rep, the lowering portion, would take more time. On Jesse's repetitions there, it really wasn't significant. It was too quick. What you wanna do is you wanna be somewhere in the range of around two to three seconds. Because what we know is a half a second on the way down of a rep is a non-controlled rep. And that's not gonna produce much tension on the way down. Right. A second would be better, but not as good as, as where it could be, which would be more like two seconds or three seconds. If you apply a three second eccentric tension on the way down and a one second concentric on the way up, and we know that doing explosive repetitions is a good thing, you'd have four seconds per rep. In a set of 12, you've gotten to a full 48 seconds for you guys that do math out there. 12 times four, 48. You've gotten into that range where we know we can have enough of that accumulated time under tension to deliver the gains that we're looking for in the absence of some of that really high weight they would be using. Mm -hmm. Now, as a physical therapist, I would argue that controlled repetitions are a must with whatever rep range you're using. So the eccentric portion of a lift, even in those lower rep ranges, is still incredibly important if you wanna have any longevity in the gym. Now, that's all good. However, a lot of things start to go wrong when you fixate on this three sets of 12 mentality because right off the bat, Jesse, take these weights again. Yes, sir. If you find yourself performing your sets and you're fixated on the rep count, go ahead and do a set. To 12? To 12. Now, let's say on the third repetition here, it gets pretty difficult. Let's just say like, there's, there's no way I'm getting to my 12 repetitions. What would you do? I would start uh, cutting my reps short. Like how? Range of motion? Range of motion. So go ahead. So you start pumping out a few half reps. You're like, okay, well, four and five and six. So you start to throw away repetitions with the pursuit being, I got to get to my 12. You're making a giant mistake there too because this fixation on hitting a certain number 
and discrediting the value of the tension and the intensity that's required on every set to drive new muscle gains is a major mistake. So if I go and I perform my first few repetitions, obviously those are the easiest ones of a set. They're not gonna be doing much of the, the, the actual work for you. If you then start cutting short the mid reps, because again, you're afraid of not being able to reach the number 12, then you've kind of thrown away the value of the middle reps as well. And then when you get to the end and he starts to say, okay, now I feel like if I resume my good full range of motion repetitions, I'll be able to get my 10, 11, and 12 with good difficulty. Yeah, but I would argue that it's a different impact and result because the repetitions leading up to it to cause the fatigue that, that led into those final three really productive repetitions isn't the same. You let go of all that when you kind of half-assed your repetitions in the middle of the set. So that's a mistake. Take this concept and apply it even further to the sets portion of three sets of 12. Why is it that three seems to be the magical number that we have to assign to any given exercise that we're doing for a muscle group? Why can't it be two? Why in some cases can't it just be one? If you're so fixated on hitting your three sets, you can make a lot of other mistakes. Again, join in and see if you've ever done any of these things. You do your first set and you say to yourself, I'm never gonna be able to get three sets of this weight. So instead of even completing your first set, you bail on that weight and you drop down to something lighter that you know you'll be able to use for all three sets. That's a mistake. If you could have gotten 12 repetitions, and it'd be very, very challenging on that last rep you were going to failure, then use that weight and simply drop the weight down when you got to sets two and three. Yeah. It's a better end goal. Again, you're fixated on being able to use 55 pounds for three sets of 12. Don't get married to the numbers. Again, the language of muscles is tension, not a number on the side of the dumbbell. If you make that mistake by fixating on the number of sets, you would also cost yourself an opportunity to maybe drive more of those available resources towards a, an additional exercise that might just happen to hit the muscle from a different angle and therefore get a better overall result. For example, if you're training your chest and you're fixated on doing your three sets of flat bench, right? And by the third set, because of what I just talked about here, you didn't really have much that you're getting from it anyway. You kind of half-assed your way through the first couple sets, but on the last set, you're not even using the appropriate weight to stimulate new growth from that set. You would have been better off bailing at two and just putting the additional set towards another exercise that hit the chest from a different angle. In this case, maybe a dip, right? So you can hit some of the lower chest fibers rather than the upper chest and get a more well-rounded impact on that muscle. But we fixate on these numbers and by doing so, we cost ourselves. One other thing here that I want you guys to understand, don't fall in love with 12. You can build muscle from anywhere from five or six reps all the way up to 30 reps, sometimes even a little bit more, as long as the effort is there. I will caution you though that as you start to work into those higher rep ranges, the tension that you really need to find and, and, and sort of you know, dig down deep to find is a willingness to train through the burn because the stimulus that becomes the driver of muscle growth there is the metabolic stimulus, the burn, right? Even, even the pump itself will actually help you in this case, but you really wanna be able to dig down into that burn once it starts to burn is when the set starts yeah. and you want to be able to go and, and, and push further. Again, counting repetitions is not your goal. Making all of your repetitions count is the goal. As far as the slow eccentric, because again, people get married to these concepts. All right, Jeff is saying go slow on the eccentric. Not necessarily in those really high repetition sets, 25 repetitions, it's kind of nonsense because what kind of a eccentric overload are you getting with a weight that you could possibly lift for 25 repetitions? On rep two and three and four, if you're going slow on the eccentric, it's like, it's nothing. You're not getting any tension. Yeah. The focus there shifts to your ability to withstand that burn. But not getting fixated on the numbers is the best thing you can possibly do if you want to see gains. I'm not picking on three sets of 12, but God damn it, go look at any of your programs you're doing right now. I guarantee you there's a lot of three sets of 12 prescriptions, yeah. maybe three sets of 10. It's the same thing applies there too. Don't get married to those numbers. Instead, understand that what you're trying to do is make sure the effort is there to create muscle growth, not just the number being checked off. And when you do that, guys, I promise you, you'll make the best gains you possibly can. If you're looking for complete programs, guys, where by the way, we program in expanded set ranges, do two to four sets, because I want you to have the flexibility to know 
your body is unique to you and the stimulus is what really matters the most, not just checking a box. You can find them in our FNX programs over at FNX.com. I hope you found the video helpful, guys. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. If you haven't checked out the old video, Jesse's grown a bit since then. You can watch that one right over here as well. In the meantime, hope you guys subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.